Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on how to sit comfortably for meditation. This is probably one of the biggest questions that I'm asked when I'm teaching uh, meditation and yoga is how do I sit comfortably? And in fact, it's one of the things that really deters a lot of people from meditating because it's just so uncomfortable to sit for such long periods of time. So let me tell you a story originally first um, when yoga was developed, the asana practice, so the physical practice that you see uh, now on your Instagram feeds and, and the like, and, and that you might perform at your local yoga studio or in a gym. These movements were designed to create a balance in the body between strength and flexibility so that people could sit for long periods of time and meditate to basically remove um, the level of discomfort that becomes distracting to us um, when we are out of balance in our bodies. So a lot of the times it's really great to do an asana practice, to do a physical practice before you meditate, to just get rid of any tension in the body. Obviously that one practice is not going to eliminate all tension, um, but it'll also develop the strength to sit for long periods of time so you can be uh, a little less distracted by the body at least. Uh, and then it's only the mind that you have to deal with. So I'm gonna give you a few tips on how you might sit comfortably. So first tip is if you are sitting, I suggest you sit up on something to make your hips higher than your knees. Having the knees a bit higher than the hips is gonna put pressure in the hips and in the knee joints, and that's gonna distract us from meditating. So I've got this handy block here. You might put one or two. You might have a pillow at home that would do a very similar thing. Um, if you use a yoga mat, uh, or I've got a handy trusty book here, my light and yoga. It could also just lift me up because also some people are only gonna need a tiny lift in the hips. But you know, if you do um, experience a lot of discomfort in the knees, then I'd suggest doing something higher like the blocks. But as I was saying before, if you want to just have your mat with you and you don't wanna carry bulky blocks or things around with you, then you can roll up the mat to an extent and then sit yourself or well, your sit bones up on the edge of that mat too and that will help elevate the hips. For the purposes of this tutorial I'm just going to roll this back out and I'm going to go with my trusty block because I find it quite comfy. So I pop it at the back of my mat and then I sit my hips so that my sit bones are on the block and then I sit a bit further forward from that. So now you can see the whole angle of my body has changed. My knees are angling down, and there's a little bit more weight being bared in the shins as well as the buttocks. Now, one key thing I really learnt um, that completely changed my meditation experience for me um, was to give my hips and my pelvis a little bit of an anterior pelvic tilt. So what do I mean by that? I'm gonna turn via the side so you can have a real good look at this. I'll just remove the block for the moment. Now, many of us, when we sit, we start to curve like this. And what happens is our hip flexors start to grip and it's really hard. And we can use our hands to try and pull us up. But if we're sinking back in our hips like this with a posterior tilt, it's really uncomfortable. However, if I do the opposite and put a slight anterior pelvic tilt, um, it's gonna help me to stack my entire pelvis and spine. So you can see this is quite difficult. I'm dealing with a, um, a broken, or oh, not a broken spine, but a rounded spine. I'm compressing all the organs that I use to help me breathe well, which is also important. But as soon as I lift up, and then ever so slightly feel like I'm sticking my butt out, you'll see my entire posture changes. And what I'm doing is allowing for the natural stack of um, the spine. And if we can find that balance where we are just stacking the bones on top of one another in their natural arrangement with that slight S curve in the lower back, then we also don't have to grip our muscles as much. So we're not gonna fatigue and we can sit for much longer periods of time. So one way of really achieving this anterior pelvic tilt, and you might've heard it in a yoga class before, is to grab your butt cheek, pull it out, 
so that you can feel the firmness of your um, sit bone coming down onto the ground and then grab the opposite one and then lift up. Now, if you are someone who has lordosis, lordosis and sits in the lower back and has a natural S curve, like a really big S curve, I should say, we all have a natural S curve, but if you have a really big S curve, you might want to just keep it a little bit more neutral. But for those of us who are quite tight in our hip flexors, just pulling out that buttock flesh and tilting the pelvis ever so slightly forward helps us to stack. Great. Now I'm going to come back to my block to make myself as comfortable as possible. The next thing is to feel a grounding down in the sit bones. So I actually want to feel quite a bit of heaviness. It's going to help ground and support me. And in opposition to this, we want to feel a lightness up through the body. So up through a lift that comes from the pelvic floor all the way up to the crown of the head as if there was a piece of string through the center of my head which allows me to lift up. Then if I relax my shoulders back and down, release the hands, I should kind of just be hanging in that position of the stacked bones on top of each other. Have a little go of this yourself. And if I do find that beautiful sweet spot where my, my spine is perfectly stacked in its natural S curve, then I don't actually have to engage my abdominals too much. If I'm too far back or I'm too far forward, other things have to start engaging. Either the abdominals if I'm too curled in or the back if I'm too arched. Great. And then the hand position can also create a level of comfort or discomfort. So especially if you're beginning or you've got anything going on with the shoulders, I'd suggest allowing the hands to just drop down, either face down or face up. And then if you did want to take a mudra, you could join the two uh, first fingers, the thumb and the first index finger, either up or down. And then finally, if you prefer to meditate in a chair, same concept. You want to make sure that your hips are a little higher than your knees. So if the chair is quite short and your knees are above here, same thing. You're going to feel that tension in the hip flexors. It's going to be really, really hard to concentrate. So if you do have a shorter chair, same idea, either pop a block, a book, a folded towel, a little pillow underneath the hips just to lift you up that little bit taller. And make sure that your feet are firmly planted down onto the mat or the ground. Just so you can get that grounding through the feet, grounding through the sit bones, you've got that same little bit of anterior pelvic tilt. You've got your natural S curve lengthening up through the crown of the head and then either hands up or down. Great. So if you also want to develop a bit more comfortability in your meditation, I'd suggest going and taking a class uh, in some yoga asana so you can warm up the body and you can get the blood flow moving and you can remove any points of tension. I've got some great classes up on omine.com. Um, one of them which I would suggest is called Spring Clean for the Hips. And the reason being you create a lot of space and flow in and around the hips. And the hips are where a lot of us experience the most tension in our meditation. Great. I hope this helps you out for your meditation. Namaste.